Hey everybody, Andrew here. This is part two of my very long conversation with Danny Saab. I hope you enjoy it, and now, on to the episode. And by the way, it's Supergirl. See? Supergirl. That's what happens when you touch my stuff. A Kryptonian girl with blonde hair and a bad attitude. She moved so fast that Lois didn't even know it hit her. A Kryptonian attacked Lois? Yeah, right before she came after me. Chloe, not only is she as strong as I am, she can fly. Well, sounds like we got ourselves a true blue Supergirl. Okay, her Krypton is gone. What do you mean gone? It exploded. You and I are the only survivors. Planets don't just explode, Kalal. Guess the humans are right, Kalal. Girls do mature faster than boys. I was curious if you have seen, um, are you a big, like, animation guy? Do you watch a lot of the animated series, like Batman the Animated Series, Superman? Um, animated series, I, all ha- that? I have seen them. Um, unfortunately, I didn't, haven't watched too much of, uh, like, Young Justice and, um, some of the newer ones that are out right now, just because of Living Canada, I don't think we can get them on, like, I don't think we even have the Teletoon, I think, is what we have or something like that. But I have seen the animated series for Batman and Superman and the Just League as well, too, yes. What did you think of Kara's portrayal in Superman the Animated Series? Did you enjoy <sighs> it? Did you not? You no, know, I enjoyed it. I did. I, I'm trying to just remember because it's been years since I've watched it. But, uh, no, I, I did think it was enjoyable. And uh, I specifically remember one episode. I think she was with, um, with Batgirl, I think. And I don't think it was Superman or Batman were in this episode, but she was with... Batgirl, and they were fighting Harley Quinn yep, yep. and uh, Poison Ivy, I think it was, and uh, that was kind of fun. That was kind of a fun episode. Yeah, I think the, the episode was titled uh, "Girls' Night Out," kind of appropriate, considering yeah. it was an all girl, all girl episode. Between, <laughs> yeah, between well, the, the the villains and the heroes, I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, and that really develops Supergirl's relationship between, with with Batgirl. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. in the comics they have a really really solid relationship I mean I, or at least I know they do in the Batgirl series I don't, I don't know if you if you read um oh, what's it Brian, yeah. Brian Q. Miller's Batgirl title I'm sorry did you ever read uh, uh, the Brian Q. Miller Batgirl title um not too much no not unfortunately much. I, I've seen the I've picked a few up a few issues here and there but nothing really uh, solid now Supergirl so- guest starred in that series and you can really tell the, the relationship but between Batgirl and Supergirl, which was really, really mm-hmm. cool to see. Yeah. Um, and no, they, they're, they're, and they've yeah. teamed up throughout the years. I mean it's it's been a long it's been a long history with those two characters. As as it is with Batman and Superman. I mean that's just the female yes. version of of Batman and Superman, so well, wasn't there a series that I think a while back? I mean, something I've been meaning to read as well too. I think it's called Elseworlds Finest, where you had Supergirl and Batgirl together. I think it was like maybe four or five book series or series or something like that. But I'm not uh, familiar with it. I'm, it wouldn't surprise me that there's a series out there showcasing those two characters. Yeah, I've heard of them. Let me just Google it right now. But uh, like I said, it's I'm not exactly sure what year it came out, but uh, it was a while back. Yeah. But, uh, you, you mentioned you're not huge into young young justice. Is that just because you don't get it, or it's just because we don't get it? Yeah. <laughs> like so, up here in Canada, I don't think I even like I said. I, I I mean, I have cable, but I don't think I have any of the uh, the cartoon channels. We don't have any kids or anything like that, so I don't get any of the cartoon channels, unfortunately. But uh, now, do, do uh, you have iTunes? I do. Uh, you can download it off the iTunes Store. 
Oh, okay. So, so check that out. If if you want to check it out, I okay. have I, I have had season passes for Young Justice, mm-hmm. uh, the first season and now into the second season. This <laughs> is probably the best series, far none that I have seen in years. It's better yeah. than Justice League Unlimited. It's wow. really that yeah. good. I would really highly encourage you to check it so- out. So who are the characters in Young Justice? I know there's, I think it's Robin, right? Yeah. Um, Shub- in season one, we've got we've got Robin, we've got Kid Flash, we've got Aqualad, we've got Speedy, we've got Artemis. Who else we got? Let me take a quick peek here on my on my iPad. Yep. Actually, why you do that? I just want to mention uh, regarding Elseworlds Finest. Uh, it, there's actually one issue. It came out in September of 1998. Um, and it's kind of really interesting because actually it's it's based on a world where Bruce Wayne was never Batman, and Su- and Superman Kal El didn't survive his journey to become Superman. Mm. So basically, the only heroes are Batgirl and Supergirl. Is that is that a series that can be found on Comicsology or the DC app? Uh, this is actually one I just looked up through uh, Wikipedia, but let me just look see if it's comicsology as well too. Probably is, I'm sure. But uh... um, the characters in the Young Justice series we were talking about is Kid Flash, Miss Martian, Robin, Superboy, Artemis, and um, Aqualad. So, okay. Um, no, it's a, it's a really good series. Now, isn't there a, a comic book based on that too as well? There Young- is, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually reading the monthly title. It um, it takes place between the actual episodes, so okay. it's like episode one, then then an issue of the comic, episode two, then an issue of the comic, and so on and so forth. But oh, it's uh, it's kind of a tweener, and it's re- it's a really good it's a really good uh, uh, series. I've, I've been okay. enjoying it, but they they haven't got out of season one yet, which is kind of disappointing. But you know yeah. these things take time, and and it's only a monthly title. So, oh, that's pretty cool. Whereas, but check it out then. It says on iTunes, right? Yeah, it should be. On, yeah, oh. it, is, it is on iTunes. At least for here in the U.S., it is. So okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out for sure. Uh, all sorts of finest is not on. Com- I pick up any. I'm sure comic book stores and something like that have it. Though. Sure, sure. Now, are you a fan at all of Justice? Like that available for digital download, though. Yeah, unfortunately. Are you much of a fan of Justice League Unlimited? <laughs> that sounds like a really good show. Yeah, I'm sorry? It, it's, a, it's a great show. Um, <clears throat> okay. But, uh, yeah, I'll check it out for sure. Yeah, it's... It, it's. I mean, once once you download the first episode, you're hooked. I'm telling you that right now, and you're going to want to buy almost every episode. So. <laughs> I will definitely check it out. So, um, Speaking of a uh, TV show, have you checked out the uh, Super Best Friends Forever yet? I have not. I have not gotten a chance to check that out. I'm not a huge... I mean, I, I I do watch a lot of the DC shorts. Some mm-hmm. of them are good. Some of them are awful. <laughs> okay, really? So, um, I haven't I haven't checked out the Super Best Friends Forever short that they've done. Is mm-hmm. it good? Do you enjoy it? I do enjoy it. I mean, they're they're very cute. They're very very funny. So I do kind of enjoy them. Yeah, they're yeah. <laughs> I do Actually, like. I think I caught one last week. It was during during an episode of Young Justice. And okay. I th- I, you're right. I thought it was very very cute. Um, yep. Love the interaction between Wonder Girl, Batgirl, and, and Supergirl. I thought I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> so yeah, it is kind of funny. But uh, if it is up on there, I, I do have all three episodes up on my website. If you want to check them out later on, no, but you do. Uh, I, yep. yeah, I, I will probably have to go over there and check that out. Now, have you been a, a Justice League Unlimited fan? Dan? I have. Yes, you have. Um, have. Do you have a favorite episode of that series? <sighs> trying to think of a favorite episode of that series. I mean, it's been a while since I've watched them, so I'm just trying to remember. Yeah. I remember there was one episode where all the superheroes become children, I think it was. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> that was kind of a funny episode. I yeah, like that. It was a, it was a funny episode. <laughs> it's very funny. Uh, what else was there? There was, uh, there was also one episode where there were... Uh, Bruce Wayne and, and uh, one of them, Diana, were actually dancing at the beginning of it, and then uh, there was something that happened, and then at the end, that Diana told him that he promised her a dance or something like that afterwards, and he was trying to hide his identity or something like that. It's kind of funny. 
I, I don't know the episode names. I'm sorry. But yeah, no, no, no. It's it's not a problem at all. Um, Actually, there was a, a two part episode as well too. I, I think a two or three part episode where uh, Hawk Girl betrayed the Justice League. I think it was. Yes, yes, that was towards the end of season two, I believe. Yeah, that one was pretty good. I like that whole series. Now, did you follow Su- uh, Supergirl in that series at all? I did, yes. As much as I could, I did, yeah. Like I said, it's been a while since I watched them, but I have I have seen Supergirl in the last year again. Um, I really liked the um, what they did in, at the end of season one of, of Justice League Unlimited, where they brought in what was supposed to be Supergirl's clone, a.k.a. Power Girl, or Galatea. Galatea, supposed yeah. To be, supposed to be Power Girl, a more advanced version of herself. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that I thought that two episode arc was really good, and she was introduced earlier that season, which was really well. And she really didn't get her Supergirl costume until season two, I think, which was the iconic blue costume that we all come to yeah. love and know. Um, mm-hmm. But um, every episode with Supergirl, either whether it be Superman, the animated series. Or Justice League Unlimited has been has been great. I've enjoyed them all. So, oh, they definitely have uh, for sure. And, and uh, I love the the kind of magic sometimes too between Supergirl. And I think it was um, Star Girl. I think it was. I remember one episode where Supergirl was kind of getting all this attention, all that stuff from fans, and Star Girl was getting nothing, and she was getting yes, all set up. Yes, I, I'm familiar with the episode. It's a <laughs> it's a very good episode. I, I enjoy that one. That was pretty funny. Now. You are a fan of Superman Batman Apocalypse. I know this because Absolutely. you we both we, we both enjoy Summer Glau's part take on the character of Supergirl. What do you like most about the Superman Batman Apocalypse movie? Uh, well I mean it's it's hard to say, man. I know they didn't follow the comic book per se exactly, you know, uh, like I know I think the ending was a little bit different than the comic book series, which which is fine because, I mean, you don't want the exact same thing, right? You want a little bit of different, a little bit something, uh, a little bit of changeover. But I think what I liked the most about it was just the, the kind of uh, emotion behind it, especially, you know, behind Summer Glass performance of, of Kara and, you know, how she's trying to, you know, she's not sure what she should do with her life and kind of reach out and bring, uh, just sort of grab her own identity out of Superman's shadow kind of thing. And, um, I mean, there were kind of some scenes that were kind of funny, like especially when she was like going shopping, for example, with Clark, and uh, you know he's like sitting there, and there's, there's music playing in the background. So it's yeah. kind of fun. Um, but no, it was it was just it was a sweet, sweet movie, and I love how you know Subaru just about Subaru coming into her own uh, and becoming her own heroine, which I thought was pretty yeah. cool. Well, for someone who's who, I'm, I'm actually covering um, what that movie covers in my show okay. right now. Um, I'm covering. Uh, Superman, Batman, number eight through thirteen. Okay. Um, in that, in that arc, that movie depicts that story almost to the T. There are very, mm-hmm. very few differences in the comic book compared to the movie, and that's what yeah. I love most about that specific movie. They were very serious about taking that that part of her origin story and bringing it forward, so yeah. fans can really get a, a grasp of. Who this character is and what she's all about. I yep. I really love the scene um, when Kara's in the fortress um, and she's being chased by Crypto, and Crypto does not like Kara at all. I really really enjoyed that scene, um, and and Clark having <laughs> no. to Clark having to yes. beat his dog away from Kara. I thought that was that was and and, and Batman <laughs> and ba- Batman and Superman. I mean, Ke- Ke- Kevin Conroy is just a genius when it comes to the oh yeah, you know, the Batman hands down character. for sure. And Tim, Tim Daly, yeah. I mean, there is no better Superman besides no, Tim Daly. Not. I mean, George George Newman does a great job in, in the Justice League mm-hmm. series. I mean, and it's it's very it, he sounds a lot like Tim Daly, and I mm-hmm. think that's that's that was the, that was the great transition about that, but. Uh, no, I love. I, I I just love the movie. I love Kara's portake, um, going, being captured by Wonder Woman, being brought to Paradise Island, being trained by Wonder Woman, yes, being mm-hmm. stolen by Darkseid, and we yes. we really haven't seen Apocalypse and Darkseid all that much in any any other animated form. I mean, we saw a little bit on Superman the animated series. But mm-hmm. it, it wasn't as dark as we saw here in this PG-13 animated movie. 
Yeah. Darkseid was well done. I almost wish they had gotten Michael Ironsides to play Darkseid. But, yeah. But, you know, you can't, you, you can't get everything. I mean, no. it, is, it, it is what it is. But um, I love... No. I, I loved the, I loved the Furies. I love that they brought um, Big Big Barda back from her exile from Apocalypse. Mm-hmm. I thought that was cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. And I really just love the banter between Superman and Batman. It's very <laughs> it, it's just great stuff. I mean, yes, especially when um, one one of my favorite scenes between those two guys is when they're they're in a cave. And they're in the cave, and and Kara just rips apart the back computer. He's like, mm-hmm. and Superman was like, "Yeah, I'll 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 pay you back for the computer." And the Batman was like, "Yeah, on a reporter salary." Great. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> that was pretty funny. I and thought I thought that was great. What I kind of like too, and I think I read about this uh, as well afterwards, but it's back to what you were saying about how they kind of stayed very close to the comic book. But even the artwork from the comic book looks very similar to the oh, to the movie. Extremely, stuff. and me being. I mean, oh, sorry, go ahead. Me, me, me being a big Mike Turner fan, I like a lot what Mike yeah. Turner does with Kara's character. Mm-hmm. But you know, they didn't overly overly sexualize it in the movie, which I really, really yeah. enjoyed. Yes. They didn't show too much, which I liked. Mm-hmm. So, um, but you're right. The artwork was almost identical, which which was yeah, amazing. It was so. like it was like Mike Turner's art just flowing right in, right, right, right onto the screen. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. It, was, it, was, it looked fantastic. Um, and yeah, you're right. I mean, they didn't overly ex- you know, expose Kara in that sense, like it, like they did in the comic books uh, on film, which is really good. Um, I mean, it was especially when they came to the Furies and, and they're fighting, and I didn't think there were a couple of swear words in there too. I thought that was kind of weird. I mean, especially for you know, if you want some for some this for children to watch, for example, um, it was a kind of a little bit too much. I think a little bit. I mean, there's a lot of blood and, yeah. and fighting and swear words and stuff like that. But you know, and, yeah. It's, it's, well, you know, I think, I think, I think these fun. DC animated movies walk walk a very fine <laughs> line between what's for adult and what's for kids. You know, I mean, they're all rated PG-13 so far, mm-hmm. I believe. I mean, I don't think they've been rated anything less than PG-13. I'm not, yeah, I'm, not true. I'm not sure about that, but I mean, I think they, they gear more the audience towards the actual adult fans, which is kind of too bad because, I mean, these kids want to watch these movies. I mean, they're cartoons for crying out mm-hmm. loud. Exactly. So, and I mean, they should yeah. be geared more towards kids, but... Unfortunately, the I mean, it's it's the same thing with the with the comic book industry. It's lost a lot of its it, it's more young fans, more more as more geared towards the adult fans, which is really not what comic books is was yeah, really exactly. designed for, you know. <clears throat> yep. But I mean, you have to cater to your audience too. Yeah. No, I mean, I I, I mean, I get that, but. I mean, you got to think toward the future, right? I mean, if you start reading comic books at a young age, you know, to children at a young age, or let them watch the movies at a young age, they're going to be hooked for life, right? I mean, that's one of the most impressionable. That's one they're they want to ex- be exposed to everything. So, you know, if you make it accessible to them, um, then I think you'd have fans for life that way a little, little bit more than you would. Um, sure. Like even like. Even like the the books that you were saying, how Michael Turner really um, super exposed Kara a lot. I mean, I'm sure a lot of those books you probably want to read to a child, just because I mean you see Kara half naked in some yeah. of those images, right? I mean, it, it, in that sense, because I mean they had a great opportunity to, especially with the young girls, right? I mean, basically, you know, this is a heroine, and there's not too many of them besides her one on one back girls, but there's not too many of them uh, in the DC universe, but. You know, you have an opportunity for young girls to 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 idolize Supergirl. But I mean, if you if you if they pick up a book like like say Michael Turner's book, for example, where Supergirl's so superly exposed, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a turnoff, right? It's not they're yeah, not going to be interested, sure. or you know, parents won't let them read it. So yeah, that's what's hard about it, you know. But you know, that's what's so great about the um, like this. What, I mean, what they're doing now, I mean, it's it's more... I'm not saying it's more geared for kids, but it's something kids can hop on to. I mean, mm-hmm. and, and I think that's why they really rebooted all of, like, these 52 titles. Right. So you can get a jumping on point, and, I mean, and it's... it's 
I mean, there was an outcry of fans all across the internet when they decided to go this route and cancel all of the previous books with all the mm-hmm. continuity and redo the continuity and doing all this stuff. But, you know, I haven't had a problem with... I mean, I'm not reading a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Really, the only title I read now is is Supergirl. And I've actually picked up the New Earth 2 title. Mm-hmm. I, and I really want to read this New World's Finest with this the new Power Girl and, and this new Robin. Okay. Have you checked out Earth 2 or the, the World's Finest? Yep, actually, I did uh, check out both. Um, and just back to what you were saying a second ago, you're right, when the new 52 kind of started, a lot of people had issues with it because of rebooting it and, and all that other stuff. But, I mean, I was one of the few people that really kind of liked it because, as I mentioned before, I was never really a hardcore comic book fan uh, before the new 52. So this gave me a great opportunity to sort of jump in. And one of the reasons why I wasn't a hardcore comic book fan before is because I just didn't know where to jump in. Yeah. I mean, because you have... They've already up to issues, you know, six hundred and seven hundred, whatever the case may be. Like, where do you jump in, right? So that's why I did, you know, pick up the the, the trades and stuff like that here and there. But I mean, I really want to get the monthly series, but I just didn't know how. So I figured with the new fifty two now rebooting, uh, it was a perfect opportunity to do it, and I'm, I'm really glad DC did do it because I think they did pick up a lot of uh, viewers this way, a lot of uh, sorry, viewers, a lot of readers this way, and myself included, right? I and mean, that's why I jumped in. And uh, you're right, but I did start off with a whole whack of number ones. And slowly by week two and week three, they kind of got lower, less and less and less. Um, but I'm basically the only ones I'm reading right now are Supergirl, of course. Uh, Batman, if you haven't read Batman yet, Andrew, read it. It's fantastic. Uh, who Justice is, League. Who is the one. writer on the new Batman title? Uh, you have Greg Capullo and Scott Snyder. Oh, okay. That yeah. Greg Capullo's, um the I've artwork. heard, yes. I mean, I've read a lot of his stuff, and it's dynamite, yeah. it's really good stuff. Yeah, I know, it's, it's, it's fantastic, it's, it's, especially the Court of Owls now, it's it's the big thing going on in the DC Universe, so it's, especially it's crossing over so many other books right now, to Batgirl, to Nightwing, to uh, so many other ones, so it's it's worth reading for sure. And like I said, they're only up to issue 9 or 10, I think, I so... I believe so. Gray, um, <laughs> Gray was on this, the, the Supergirl title for quite a, quite a long time. Um, Greg Capullo? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was during, during the towards the end of the, um, or maybe I'm th- no, I'm thinking of Palmiotti. Sorry, wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Well, I mean, what you're saying about the Supergirl title, and one thing I kind of just to get off topic for a little bit, but regarding the the. Um, you know, the 2005 series of Supergirl, you know, with Jeff Loeb and Michael Turner started, I found toward the end, you had so many different artists that were kind of jumping in at that point. Like, it seems like almost every week you had a different artist yeah. on the book. You didn't have a constant stream, and that kind of really kind of turned me off the book a little bit, yeah. um, simply because some of the artist's work was great, some were not. Most of them not. Sure. <laughs> but, you know, and that kind of really, you have that inconsistency, it's not going to be very good. Yeah. And I think yeah. another reason why they started, maybe started this whole new 52, is so they can get teams on the books and keep them there for a long time. Yeah. At least I hope for a long time. Yeah. And that we have consistency, you have storylines and arcs and, and long arcs and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so back to the new 52. So, like I said, Batman, uh, Just League, I'm reading as well too. If you haven't read Just League, it's really good too. Uh, what else am I reading? Uh, Super Golf Course, uh, World's Finest, uh, I've started reading, as well as Earth 2. So, those are the ones I'm kind of reading on the New 52 right now. Yeah. Um, I've only read the first issue of uh, World's Finest and Earth 2. I haven't, I picked up the second ones, but I haven't read them yet. Uh, but so far I like them. They're not bad. And like I said, you have, uh, you know, I think in World's Finest you have, uh, Super Girl of Earth 2 in there, uh, who's basically Power Girl now in, in our world or in the, Earth One, uh, so that's kind of interesting. It's kind of cool to have uh, that kind of uh, differences, I guess, from the original Supergirl. It's going to be kind of interesting when they actually meet, though. But um, now, do you yeah. think they're going to move into this? I mean, now we've created Earth Two. Mm-hmm. Are they going to move into a new multiverse? Do you think? I'm not 100 percent sure, but I could see it happening. I yeah. think so. I, I can see it maybe down the road. It, it could probably happen. Yeah, it'd be definitely. It'd be- It'd be interesting to see. I mean, as we know, comic book ideas never die. For, I mean, characters don't die. Sorry. They well, always come back. So, and yeah. story concepts always come back. I'm, I'm not, I'm not surprised. I wouldn't be surprised to see a new, a, a new multiverse come back, even, even after the crisis. I'm, mm-hmm. not, I'm not sure how they would 
introduce a new multiverse, but the the, the concept is there to be used if they decide to ever right. go back to to a new multiverse. I'm just not sure how they would do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I have no problem with multiverses. I have no problem with an Earth 2, um, as long as kind of things straightforward and organized and not sort of chaotic, yeah. I guess you could say, and then just crossing every which way and gets everybody confused. Um but no, I mean, I have no problem with those at all. Like, it gives you kind of more opportunity to get more uh, superheroes and more villains and, and crossing overs and stuff like that. So no, I, I have no problem with it at all. Yeah. Well, uh, let's move on to... Um, we're actually going to jump into the comic book adaptations of Supergirl. Um, we're going to start with the Silver Age Supergirl and talk a little bit about her, her origin and really her... What... I'm really curious to know. I mean, you said you haven't read much of the Supergirl in the Silver Age. No. Of it, of what you have read, have mm-hmm. you enjoyed it? Have you found it campy? Have you found what? What, uh, what have you been I, finding about? I, I, the I mean, Silver the only. Supergirl? I mean, it's it's <laughs> kind of silly, I guess you could say, but I don't know. It's just kind of weird. It's different. It was a different era. I think the only issue I've read of the Silver Age, I think, I'm not I don't know if it's even consider as part of Supergirl, but I think it's it's actually a book that you reviewed where Jimmy Olsen was trying to create a girlfriend for Superman, I think it was. Yes. And yep. he had a genie and then basically, or some sort of wish upon a star, I can't remember what yeah. it was. <laughs> and, and somehow uh, Supergirl appeared to be his perfect mate and, and, and that's and that's pretty much only one I've read of new of the Silver Age so far. Yeah. Um, yep. I have picked up both of the um, I don't know, kind of volumes, I guess, or the both encyclopedias, whatever you want to call them, yeah, uh, yeah. of Supergirl. So I do have them. I just haven't got a chance to read them. Yeah, yet. the um, it's not the archives, but it's the um, DC presents Supergirl yes, exactly. volume yeah. one or something exactly. like that. That's actually what the only way that I'm reading them myself. So, mm-hmm. yeah. um, but I mean, I mean, Silver Age books are you can't find them. It's so hard. It's so hard to find them, even yeah. in among ba- even among comic book stores, I mean, they're just, unfortunately there's just no way to find them, so Right, yeah, unless you go to like the, to a collector or you find them on the internet or something like that you know, they're, Well, they're even, right. even at that, I mean Mile High, I mean, Mile High Comics, I'm sure you've heard of them mm-hmm. Yeah, They're the, one of the premier largest comic book stores in the entire world mm-hmm. and, you know I mean, and their Silver Age stuff is just outlandishly expensive Okay. It's it's just really hard. I mean, hard to find cheap back issues. Okay. On Mile High, I mean, their prices are just so much higher than anything else I've ever seen. So yeah. So, I mean, no, you, you, you absolutely. Probably, and I mean, and I don't mind reading them in black and white color. I could care less. It's, yeah, no, it's, it's fine. I mean, it, I mean, the, the, the presents books were like what twenty twenty two dollars each anyway. So some that are very expensive. You have like so many issues in, in them. So yeah, I don't mind that at all either. Yeah. No, I'm 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 really enjoying what I'm reading, um, and doing reviews for the show and all that. Well, let me ask you something. How do you find how do you find the Silver Age compared to say today's Supergirl stories? Well, you know, I mean, the Silver Age Supergirl, very innocent, very. It reminds me a lot of Helen Slater's portrayal of Supergirl. Very innocent, very young, very. I mean, I'm, campy's not the word, but it's mm-hmm. it's. It is a little odd okay. in there. I mean, so I mean, it's. It, it, I mean, there are some really great stories, but I mean, there's right. just, just some a lot of weird stories too. You know. Well, I mean, from what I've seen, at least of the, the Silver Age, it seems like I mean, Supergirl kind of takes a really big backseat to Superman. So whatever Superman tells her to do, she does it. Yeah. Um, where you you have the new the new Fifty Two Supergirl, for example, where. You know, she got into a fight with him, you know, over an issue number two, for example. So, sure. you know, I, I guess it just comes down to society at the time, right? I mean, the, you know, you're talking about Supergirl, the Silver Age was way back years and years ago where, you know, the New 52 is, you know, today. So, it, yeah. it's, I guess it just comes down to society and the way they portray men, women, that sort of thing. Right, right. Well, I mean, we also have to remember it's a completely different era. I mean, we're talking 50s and 60s compared to... Oh, yeah, to exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, precisely. Modern, modern 20, 21st century... Yeah, I mean no, it's a completely absolutely. different time period, completely different kinds of things going on. I mean, you have to think what's going on in history at the same time. And a lot of these issues, I mean, you look at the prices on the covers; they're ten cents a pop. 
how how nice would it be, Danny, to pay ten cents for a comic book today? <laughs> Seriously, oh. and it's amazing how much these these books. Like I was looking into getting the uh, the new fit the sorry the uh, Action Comics two fifty two. I was looking to actually purchase it, and you know oh, really? I just have it to my collection and stuff like that. But I did find a website that actually had it, and they wanted something like five hundred and thirty dollars. Like oh, uh, oh, yes. I don't know about that. Well, it, you know, it's the same thing with like. Golden Age stories. Yeah. I mean, and you can't find Golden Age stories unless you buy them in trade. I mean, yeah. action, the very first action comics, number one, goes for mm-hmm. over a million, million plus, you know. Jeez. So, I mean, it's yeah, just, no, they're it's just crazy priced. Hard, hard to find. I mean, and if you could find an action comics, number one, for in mint condition, I mean, you're, you're, a very lucky man. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. I mean, you can sell that on eBay for a, a very good price. <laughs> yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Absolutely. Put, put, put the buy it now and reserve it at a million dollars. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I do have, I did was able to purchase a copy of uh, Supergirl number one. I think it was from 1977, I think it was, yeah. when Supergirl number one came out, the first issue, when she was, when she had her own comics. I did purchase that for like, like eighty dollars, something oh, like that. So it wasn't too moly. too expensive. So eighty bucks, I guess. Well, was he? No, he lost the maybe about thirty or forty. I can't remember exactly. Yeah. A while back, it was good. I like it. It's framed on my wall. So. Sure, sure. For sure. Well, um, um, what about this new super, uh, this '90s Supergirl slash Peter David Supergirl that you really enjoy? <laughs> Okay, so I've only read about uh, I'm in two issues into the Peter David series and uh, like I said, I, it's a, my podcast is a weekly podcast, so every week I do um, present the, the next issue, but so far from what I've read, it's a very different Supergirl, I think, if anyone's ever read before. It's a different super book altogether, not let alone Supergirl. Um, it's, and it's much edgier, it's much darker. Uh, I mean, this book definitely is not for children. I mean, even... Mm. Teenagers are are maybe a question mark. Uh, very very edgy, very very dark. Super golden this one, and uh, I mean it's. I mean when you, I, I still remember when I opened up the first page when I was reading um, the very first issue, and you have basically Linda uh, Linda Danvers uh, in her bathtub, completely naked, you know, washing cuts off her body and, and stuff like that, and just, mm. that just goes goes to show you what kind of series this is going to be. Yeah. Um, so it's very, very dark, very edgy, much different than anything, uh, and, and you know, much different than the new Supergirl, much different than uh, you know Jeff Loeb's Supergirl, much different than Silver Age Supergirl, and that's why I think um, I mentioned before when you asked me which who's my favorite writer, I said Peter David because not because he's better, but because he's different. He's different than any of the writers I've done Supergirl before, and he kind of takes it to a completely different dimension. Sure. Um, he portrays a lot of the issues and a lot of the problems in the book and a lot of the, the things that Supergirl has to deal with with uh, the problems at the time. So this book came out in the 1990s, for example. Uh, basically deals with scenism, deals with cults, uh, just things like that. And it's completely different than anything, any super book um, I've ever read. Um, like I said, it's very dark. I think even more so than, even than Batman in some ways. So mm. it, wow. it's really, really different, yeah. <laughs> I think you'll be surprised if you read if you read it. I haven't got a chance to read anything by by Peter David, um, especially. I'm I'm interested to see what his take on on Supergirl is. Um, back back um, during the '90s run of Superman, they did this whole protoplasmic Supergirl. Have you read any of that stuff? From what I understand, there was, uh, I mean, there was a, during the post-crisis Supergirl, there was a thing with Matrix, I believe. Uh, she wasn't also Kara. She wasn't, um, Superman's cousin. She was actually, you know, the protoplasmic being is what she was from another alternate reality, I think it was, or alternate universe, uh, who basically came to that Earth and became, uh, Supergirl. Basically, she had the same, um, resemblance as Lana Lang, uh, back on that old, where she was from before, and she was created by Lex Luthor. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, then she came down to Earth, this Earth because that Earth had been destroyed. So she came to this Earth, um, still looking as like Supergirl. Well, she took the name Supergirl, and uh, yeah, and that's that's basically as far as I know, that's what I know of kind of happened. But uh, that's pretty much the extent of it, though. What are your thoughts on on her being called Supergirl? 
do you think, do you agree with it? Do you disagree with it? Do you uh, like the character? Do you I can't that? remember why she was called Supergirl. I know there was a reason why, I, and I put on my episode, but I just can't remember loving me what it was off the top of my head. I think it was because maybe that Lex Luthor wanted somebody like Superman, and that's why he called her Supergirl. I can't remember, but um, uh, I mean, I, to be honest, I never really gave much thought if I had an issue with it, with her with her called Supergirl. I mean, she just maybe she'd be called Matrix, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess in reality, when you think about it, I mean, Supergirl's always have a name as... She's always been Superman's cousin from Krypton or from Argo City, you know, and then to give it to somebody that has no affiliation with Superman at all, it's it's, it's kind of weird, I guess you could say. Right. And I think that's where a lot of the confusion for a lot of fans came from. Sure. Um, and I think from what I, I, Someone actually tweeted this, but um, I think that's why... I, I can't remember which issue. I think it was issue 50, I believe it was. Um, I actually, I think someone put on my on my website, posted on my website, but I think it was issue fifty where uh, Peter David actually rebooted his own series uh, because of it. And I think uh, Kara from Krypton actually came into the it came into the uh, episode, and then I think I don't know if she took over that Supergirl's role. I'm not 100 sure I haven't got that far yet, but like I said, it, mainly because it was so confusing for a lot of people, it's much easier for them to understand that she's from Krypton and she's Superman's cousin, mm. rather than she's a protoplasmic matrix from another universe type yeah. deal. So. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of the Matrix Supergirl. I haven't I mean, the only thing I've read in it is she appears in like in the de- in the death of Superman. Um, I don't know if you listen to like um, from Crisis to Crisis, a Superman podcast or anything like that. I've heard a few times, Sam. Yeah, um, and they they bring her in. I mean, she's in the story, so. Um, but I'm, I, I just don't know much about her character. I don't know who. I know she's from. I'm pretty sure she's from the, from the Pocket Universe. They did this whole storyline. Um, nope, you're right. Uh, she during is. the nineties, she's from this pocket universe. Yep. Um, but I don't think she should have called herself Supergirl. She should have called herself something else. And mm-hmm. I don't think the the creator should have allowed the, that to for her to be called Supergirl. I think they could have should have called her something else. But it is what well, it is. It's yeah. No, I agree with you. And I think, like I said, I think that's where the a lot of the confusion sort of came from yeah. uh, no in my uh, not the last episode but my episode before that it was issue number episode number six uh, I actually had a, a a pretty good review of where Matrix is and where she came from before I jumped in the Peter David series oh, really? and because it was it was important I think for and that's where I kind of I got confused because I jumped straight into the Peter David series without knowing anything about Matrix from before so I jumped straight to the Peter David series but then when I finished it I'm like Okay, there. I saw so many questions in my head. So I knew she, I knew about Matrix, but didn't know too much about her. So I started doing some research, and I found out exactly who she was and how everything kind of tied in together. And I felt it was kind of important for my listeners to to know her history first sure. before the Peter David series. Otherwise, otherwise they'll be as lost as I was. Yeah. So that's why I believe in episode number six, I did have a, a review of, of Matrix and Post Crisis Supergirl before I jumped in the Peter David series, just so that everything kind of flows in together. Well, I think you're right. I think a lot of fans get confused because of this whole Matrix type character and her not being Kara. Right. And when they brought Kara back in 2005, you know, in I don't know what happened to Matrix prior to that, whether she just faded from existence. I don't know what happened after that. So I I'm not sure. I'm sure I'll find out when I get the issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, you're absolutely right. I think if, if they had called her something else, the there would be a lot less confusion. But because they gave the name Supergirl, and also Supergirl is affiliated with Superman and him being his cousin, being his cousin, that's where I think a lot of the confusion kind of uh, interacted for a lot of people. And that's gonna do it for part two of my conversation with Danny. Come back next week where I will have a third and final part of this conversation. Until then, have a good one, everybody. See you later. You have been listening to Krypton's Last Daughter, a Supergirl podcast, hosted by me, Andrew Pinkham. Supergirl, as well as all other characters I talk about on the show, as well as any music I use, are copyright their respective copyright holders, and no infringement is intended. The website for this show is supergirlpodcast.wordpress.com, where you will find the RSS feed, the podcast, the iTunes link, and a whole lot more. The email is supergirlpodcast at gmail.com. Now let's face it, guys, I love lots of emails, so don't be afraid to write in, alright? 
You can also like the Facebook page. Just script, type Krypton's Last Daughter to Facebook. Or check out the website for more details. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at KLD Podcast. And if you would, as a huge favor to me, and leave an iTunes review. I would really appreciate it. And I'd give you a shout out on the show. That's a personal guarantee from me. The opening theme, The Rule, as well as other original music, is written and produced by Kevin McLeod. Supergirl is created by Otto Binder and Al Plastino. Thank you for listening, and come back every month for Krypton's Last Daughter, a Supergirl podcast. To be honest, I'm not sure I've earned the right to wear this uniform, but I will.